situations of erosion. Every one of them is to wash me away of myself. Only thing remain is unshakable things. Only thing that's left in this life would be Christ and Him be glorified through this, through what's been washed out of me, washed away from me. I've heard of the rain before, a big heavy rain. They call it a goalie washer. Well, I believe tonight we could have a PAG washer. We need, I can tell you, if this place was emptied out, there was nothing left standing because people laying there prostrate on the floor. I believe, I believe we could reach this river valley. Let's sing that again. If that's really your prayer, that you'll really surrender, really surrender, that's all it is, just cry out to God a prayer. I surrender. I surrender. I wrote me of myself. Wash me away in the loves of your amazing grace. surrender to the Lord I believe there's probably a need here represented there's probably a, a, a multitude of needs here represented if there, I mean, I'm sure every one of us has got many in ourselves but if you've got a need here that you would like to surrender if you've got something a burden that you're tired of carrying you know, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you if you've got a need if you come ask one of these to pray with you believe God with you
much for making up and wait on your kids to even stop and offer. I love what Richard Baxter said. He said, if you're impoverished for the greater good, is it loss or is it gain? Yeah, what that means is if you give yourself, give of your expenses, your finances until your family does without for the kingdom of God, for the greater good, is that loss or is it gain? Isn't that an amazing concept? God, we thank you for this night, this opportunity to give into your kingdom. Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless, Lord God, this gift that we have for you, Lord God. See it to fit your need, Lord God, in this church, and this kingdom. Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless the giver, Lord. We love you. We glorify your precious name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus. That's what your mercy did for me. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for that. Music, I know, uh, I think they do a great job. I believe uh, I mean, they're, they're here a little after four to practice. They, I mean, I think they do a great job. They're, devo- they're committed. Uh, Jaya, that's a, a great, great quality to have in the church, committed people, people that are ready to be there, ready. You know, Sundays, that's what this is, Sunday. We're, we're gathering together. Uh, I think they do a great job. You know, they, I believe the, uh, the oil that runs down off the wood, I think it's, you know, the church, uh, Mr. Jason and Sister Trina do an incredible job. Obviously, like I said, we're talking about the, the, the anointing. It's just, I mean, these students, they're not, they don't just fall into it. They've been led into it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Pastor, I ever, ever, person, you know, I just pray I haven't hindered them yeah. in that. I pray that I haven't been a, uh, I, you know, this message tonight, if, if it can be made as clear as it was to me, I believe you'll be helped. Sometimes it don't flow through me as clear to flow to me. It's a, uh, we'll pray there's a lot of blockage in my life, so we pray that it, you know, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, if you'd like to stand for the reading of the word of God. If I was going to title this, I am going to title it, right? If I am right now. <laughs> Faithful over a few things. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 says, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway, took his journey. Then he, had re- he that had received the five talents went and traded them with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five saying, Lord, thou delivered me unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto them, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth. And lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I strawed, where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put the money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give unto him which had ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that shall not, that hath not, shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Would you help me pray? God, we thank you for this. We pray, God, that you would allow this word, Lord God, to, Lord God, be so, so real to us, Lord God, that that the Spirit of God would quicken us, Lord God, by by this word, Lord, that it would deal with our hearts, Lord God, make us into, into the thing that you would have us to be, Lord. We love you. We pray, God, that you would let me say nothing except for what you would say, Lord. We glorify you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. As I said, we'll title this Faithful Over a Few Things. And this, uh, this message, I believe, is probably one of the more just uh, practical. It's a very practical message. I mean, it's, it's one that you, you live. It's a very practical message. Um, we know that uh, 
the gospel is a very practical gospel. You, you, uh, your sin, my sin, sentenced me to a death. So there had to be a man to pay for that death. That's practical. For Christ must need to have suffered. That's practical. That's practical. This is a very practical message, but this is, you know, the resurrection. If I'm going to live in eternity, if I'm an eternal creature, if I'm being in Christ, I'm going to live. There is a resurrection. If that be so, as Paul said, then Christ must have been resurrected. That, that's practical. But it's also supernatural, and I pray this message ain't just practical. I hope we don't leave here and say, well, that makes sense. I'm going to be faithful over a few things. I'm going to do a little better at this or that. But I pray that this is a supernatural word. I pray that you hear it as what it is. But it says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I've always loved to study men and women who have done a great work for the kingdom of God. You know, I, I love to look up missionaries and see what they've done. I encourage um, my the students. I mean, I, I try to, to encourage them to to set heroes of the faith, you know, Acts or Hebrews chapter eleven rather gives us all these faith heroes. Well, there's you know there's been faith heroes, you know, I mean since there's been so many people to read after. And I love to to read after these people that have done a great, great, huge work. It looks like to be a a very great thing, you know, no doubt supernatural work that they've done for the kingdom of God. You know, one that I've not studied much, but uh, I, I just recently looked at a little bit was George Mueller. They said that he housed over 10,000 orphans in his life. Is that not amazing? This is George Mueller. This man, they said that there would be times when there would be no food in the house. Y'all know the stories. They would, they'd be down there, gather 300 kids ready to eat and starving, you know, hungry. They woke up, they're like my little Jamie. As soon as she wakes up, she's ready to eat. And they said there's no food in the house. And they began, they walked them kids down there, set up the tables, ready to bless the food. And they would said trucks would roll in. There'd be phone calls. You know, there'd be the milkman broke down there one time, they said, and the milk was going to spoil, so he just had to donate it to them. There wasn't a, nothing to drink in the house, and here comes just all the milk that about 300 kids could have. They said Mr. Mueller would be up all night praying and interceding for those kids. But isn't that not amazing work? But I want to talk about things like how many sleepless nights Mr. Mueller must have had. I'm not talking about just in prayer. I'm talking about when the little kid that, that had been hated for his whole life came in there his first night. Y'all rural family know all about this. He, he kicked him in the shin, spit on Mr. Mueller, you know, treated him terribly, and this man has given his whole life to him. How many little nights, how many sleepless nights, how many few things there was for Mr. Mueller? Little things. David Wilkerson, the great man of God we all know in here, he started the Teen Challenge and planted the Times Square Church. That's a great work. I love to read the story of the cross and the switchblade and, and uh, just see what this great man of God has done through his, yeah. his devotion or through his devotion in this life for the kingdom of God. But I also love at the beginning of it, he said that it all started, he was convicted over his too much television, sold the thing, began to give himself to prayer in those hours that he would have spent watching TV. Just a few things, just a little thing, just faithful over a little thing, and that God birthed. Teen Challenge in the Times Square Church. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to keep you in the dark till we get through this. I want you to know from a jump start. I'm talking about being faithful over the few things. I'm not, I'm not telling. I'm not telling. I told these students several times. God, I'm not telling you to stand on top of the table. If you do, you let me know, and I'll come there and amen you. But if you stand up on top of the table, that's great. But I'm not telling you have to and preach the gospel. But I'm telling you, every time you get a chance to witness, to minister, to, to live Christ in front of that school, I can tell you, be faithful over the few things. 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is the great prophet Samuel. There's, I mean, this is the, the great man of God of that day. But it, here's his early life. It says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. <coughs> this word ministered, means, it, it comes from a word with the meaning of menial, menial work. Now, I, I'm, I'm too ignorant to even know what the English translation of this word is, so I had to look up even the word menial. Some of you know what menial means, so we're going to go ahead and look it up for myself. It says, not requiring much skill and lacking prestige. This prophet Samuel, this great man of God in his youth, when he was started out, I know, I know this is youth service, and I'm not directing this towards youth. I can promise you I'm directing this towards everybody. I'm yeah. shooting this towards everyone. This is, a, this is a time in his life. He wasn't just trying to, he wasn't just worried about that going to the 
going to the enemy and killing all that Saul left alive. This ain't that Samuel. This ain't that Samuel. This ain't the Samuel that's anointing to the king of Israel. This ain't the Samuel that's going about and, and uh, anointing the next king of Israel. This ain't that Samuel. This ain't that Samuel. This is the Samuel that's doing menial work. Not requiring much skill and it's lacking prestige. I also want to talk about the great man that was healed by the prophet Elisha. Naaman. Y'all know the story. He came to the prophet. said, uh, you know, he had all these great things to give to him and he wouldn't receive them. But the prophet told him, he said, go jump, go jump in the water. Go jump, wash yourself. And he says, the scripture tells us, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather then, when he had said, wash and be clean. Yeah. See, so many times in my life, I've often thought, boy, it was the big things I messed up. It was the lack of doing the, you know, it was that big thing. It was that night that I preached the, you know, I, I've been, I've left here so many times and told my wife, wow, that was, that was, that was rough. That was pitiful. I don't think any single person in there understood what I was saying because I didn't understand what I was saying. I've thought that so many times here. There'll be, maybe there's probably 120 or so gathered here and this opportunity to be able to minister to 120, you know, I think, man, that really blew it when I left here. But I can tell you, I didn't blow it there. I blew it every Monday whenever I was in Dollar General and there was a lady there, you know, that needed to minister to, needed someone to give her a word from God. I can tell you, it's a few things. This, this here tonight, I, I've seen this a great honor and a great privilege to stand behind this pulpit and, and preach and declare the gospel. But I can tell you, I want to be faithful over a few things. I want to be faithful over a few things. We've got the great King David, the great King of Israel we find in, 1 Samuel, y'all know the story, chapter 17, when he slew Goliath. Now, that's a great story, but we're not talking about that David that's slain Goliath just yet. We're not talking about the David that, that has slain his ten thousands. But in chapter 17, verse 28, it says, And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Eliab is here saying, why would you come down here? Now Eliab knew how he came down here. Eliab had done eat of the bread that David brought. I do believe Eliab's not confused here. I believe he's just trying to show David and let David remember just how little he was. You're, you're just coming down here. It ain't so you can do this great work for the kingdom of God. You're coming down here. It ain't for this fight. You're not going to be battling against Saul. The reason you come here is just to bring me bread. That's all you are is the person to bring me bread. But David was faithful over a few things. He was faithful over the little things. And he said, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Who have you left these few sheep? Because that's all you do is watch the sheep. You keep the flock. But I, I, I believe David probably had this thought. He may have even, uh, you know, thrown this back at Eliab. He may have said, speaking of those few sheep, one time I was guarding that little thing, that few thing, and there come a lion and a bear out from the, out from the forest to, to take this sheep. And here I come, and, and that same experience there and that little thing, and that few, that little thing that I was faithful over, just that little experience, you know, it wasn't much. It didn't seem like much. I know you brothers were out here with Saul. But while I was there, while I was there, this lion and a bear came and take, took this sheep from the flock. And I was just being faithful over this little thing. It wasn't a big deal like this Goliath, but, but I slew that lion and took that lamb from its mouth. See, he was just being faithful over a few things. I can tell you, if, if, if a person's looking for that great ministry opportunity or that great, that great experience, you're looking for that next thing, you're needing something to, some great thing. You know, we... we Look, at, I know you scroll social media and you see these ministers and, and this stuff. And, 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 you know, if it's, I praise God and rejoice in it. But I can tell you, don't, don't seek after that. Look for that little thing, that few things that you can be faithful over. And I can promise you, he'll make you ruler over men. Yes. He'll, he'll make you that. that. That should never be our motive. But I can tell you, if you'll be faithful in that little thing. Before David was king, he was faithful with them sheep. He, he, he laid his life down. He laid his life down for those sheep before he did for all of Israel. And with, with whom have you left those few sheep? That little thing. 
I want to talk about another great story in the scripture. We all know in the book of Acts, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The great day of Pentecost was fully come, and the Spirit of God was poured out. And I, I want to read this in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now that's something I like to talk about. Amen. That's stuff I like to experience. I like to be a part of something like that. Cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. I, you know, if, be a better be God. <laughs> and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and see them re recover. That's, some, that's Pentecost. That's what we're after here. But I want to remind you of Luke chapter 24, verse 49. This is Christ's speaking as well. He said, and, I beho and behold, I send the promise of my Father, which shall enable you for these things. But he said, tarry ye. This little thing. Just be, you know, there was 500 that saw him ascend, but there's only 120 of them that's done this little thing. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now, I know in today's society, tarrying for 10 days seems like a big thing. I mean, you, you know, you're having a prayer meeting and 120 stay there for, for that many days and you know, that's, that's a big thing. But I can tell you, the scripture tells us that when the day of all, uh, day of Pentecost was fully come, they were sitting. They were sitting in that place, in that upper room, and the Spirit of God fell on them, yeah. cloven tongues like as a fire. I can tell you, it didn't look like much was going on in that upper room. They were seated. I believe they was praying. I believe there's a round-the-clock prayer meeting going on. I believe for 10 days they've been seeking the Lord's face. Seeking, you know, seeking, tarrying until just as he said. But I can tell you that last part of that, you know, take up serpents, lay hands on the sick, that seemed a lot more, oh, I, I want a part of that. But that little thing, just tarrying until, just saying with God, just seeking after. I can tell you, we'll be faithful over a few things before we ever rule over much. Yeah. I want to talk about the last example be our Lord Jesus Christ. Carpenter's son is what the scripture tells us. Christ spent 30 years on this earth prior to ministry. Now I know he's a spotless lamb, so I know during that 30 years he never wronged anybody. He's a carpenter, and I believe him to be the best one in, in Nazareth. I mean, I, I think that as pastor preaches more than needing some carpenters, I really thought he was going to get closer than he did. But anyway, so here we are talking about this carpenter's son. For 30 years he spent that time. And I believe everybody that brought him something, it didn't matter if he, he built it for them to use it this way and they brought it and it was shattered because they used it another way. I, I believe the Lord, he just, he just took it, fixed it for them, done them right, whatever way. I, I can tell you, uh, why in the world would Christ have spent 30 years prior to ministry? I don't know. That was just the, that was just the plan of God for his life. But I, I will throw this out there. You know, many believe that Joseph, you might call him his stepfather, passed before his ministry at 30. So you've got Joseph here, likely had passed away, and who's the eldest son of the house? Christ. I believe he's been faithful there until his younger brother James. Can you imagine the Lord's brother, his testimony of Christ, if Christ would have left him, left that family and not cared for him until he was old enough, James was able to take on? We know that throughout this, we know at the uh, end of our Bible there's a letter from James, and I believe it to be from the Lord's brother. He was later converted. I believe that Christ being faithful over that house and taking care of his family after Joseph's passing, that's, that's extra biblical, but I, believe, I don't believe Christ ever wronged nobody. I don't believe he failed his family. I don't believe in, if his family's doing that, living there without bread. I don't believe he's you know, leaving out, leaving that carpentry work. I believe he was a faithful over the few things, over the little things. The greatest thing, and I love the song, I believe Sister Donna sings, that it was a great thing. It was a great thing. It was a big thing. When, when, the, when the God of all, you know, the, the Word was made flesh and stepped down and, and endured the cross, despising the shame, you know, when, that was a great thing. That was an incredible thing. But I can tell you, whenever he must needs go through Samaria, some would have said that was a little thing. That was a foolish, that was a, that was a really few thing to go through Samaria. For just a moment, I want to talk about things we esteem as little. I hope I'm not boring you. I won't be much longer, but... Things we esteem as little. 
few things. I'm talking about being faithful over a few things. Money. I believe that's something that we esteem as little. You say, Brother John, you've lost your mind. People don't esteem money as little. That's most people's God. I can tell you, I believe in the kingdom of God, we esteem it as little a lot of times. I believe this to be a very faithful church, but I, I, I read somewhere where only 3% of evangelicals tithe worldwide. That's a worldwide number. 3% give a monetary tithe to the, to the kingdom of God. That's worldwide. That's amazing to me that we would esteem money as not even worth our faithfulness in. Time, here's another one. Just how careless I am, I know with myself, with my time. Prayer, these are things that we must be faithful for. They seem like a, a few things, a little thing. Study, tearing until soundness in doctrine. But I want to talk about our text just for a minute. Matthew 25, verse 21 says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We've read this. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. It says at the beginning of this, His Lord said unto him. Now, if you read to the end of that parable, it speaks of that unprofitable servant being cast into outer darkness. I, I, I so appreciated Pastor this morning talking about the rapture of the church like I could miss it. You know, there's so many times you hear people talk about the rapture of the church like you can go, but there's fewer people that talk about the rapture of the church like you can miss it. I can tell you, I appreciate. I remember so many times I would I would wake up, or and we've talked about this before, and think I've missed it. You know, I grew up in, in a different day, and they, they preached that Antichrist, the rapture of the church. They, I mean, Brother Paul knows how, how it is. I, I mean, and I, I so appreciated him this morning mentioning that, that we could, you know, preaching on the dealing with the coming of the Lord Jesus like a person could miss it. And I believe a person could, but our text here says, His Lord said unto him. Now we know that unprofitable servant was cast into outer darkness, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I can't think that to be anywhere but hell. I truly believe, I, I mean, I, I don't believe the Lord would have given me this thought or this word. I believe it's for myself. I believe it's for all of us. But I do not believe he would have given me this word if it wouldn't have been for, for us. And it, it gives you two options here. Faithful over a few things or weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, his Lord said unto him. This was his Lord said unto him. Now, isn't that amazing? Brother Jeremy knows it. You think that this, uh, most of the church, I'm sure, he, he got a better idea of the church with his traveling. But a lot of the church believes you get born into this thing. And I believe in true conversion, born again, new creation. But that's, that's, that's it. You've made it. You've, you've slid right into the kingdom of God. But this scripture here tells us that his Lord said unto them. This was, the, I believe every person in this text is a believer. You look at that word servant, this faithful servant, the unprofitable servant. There are people that were bought. They're slaves. They're bond slaves. We were bought with a price. So I'm trying to bid you to tell you, just because you're bought, just because you're blood bought, don't mean you can't be an unprofitable servant. You have to be a servant to be an unprofitable servant. You must be a servant to be an unprofitable servant. So his Lord said unto him, You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. This word here, few, it's not something complex. And y'all know it means little. But the word it comes from not only means few or little, but it also means a long season. That blew me away when I seen that. That that don't uh, I, I, you won't see that just in the King James translation. Over a few things, you won't you won't equate that with a long season. But it says short or small and a while. So there's length of time in this word. It's not just the smallness or the 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 little. It's a few things. It's really small or minute. But it's also over a long season. I know in my own life, my own walk with God, it seems like it's a little thing, but it's a long time. You understand what I'm saying? It seems like, a, you know, you're trying to do work for the kingdom of God, and it seems like it's a, a little thing you're doing for a long time. You're being faithful over this few things. You're thinking, that, that's great. I'm going to be faithful over a few things for about a week. 
And then you realize there ain't no breakthrough, ain't nothing happened. You're going to be faithful another, another week. So then you've been faithful two weeks. But this scripture here tells us that it's not just being faithful over a few things, but faithful over a little thing for a long time. Few things and many things. You've been faithful over a few things and you've been faithful over a few things and I'm going to make you rule it over many things. Few things and many are not an absolute. These words are comparative to each other. They're not giving you a definite number or I, you, you're faithful over these, this number. I'm going to give you this number. But they're comparative to each other. Few things... You know, that, that scripture, I've heard this message preach a different direction, a um, great truth. But they would highlight the fact, and I, I agree, this is absolutely biblical. They highlight the fact that this servant that was just given two talents, the servant just given one talent, it's a great sum of money. It is. It's a big, large sum of money. That's, that's absolute. You can, you can study that. It's a great, you know, the person that was given Five was obviously given more, but the, the one that was given one talent was given a great large number of money to, to make profit with. But few things and many things are comparative. What I'm saying is that as Scripture tells us that the sufferings of this life aren't worthy to be compared with that of that next life, I can tell you, just the little few things that you seem like you're constantly having to deal with. It seems like this situation arises and it's just a little thing and you, you, you deal with that little thing faithfully. I can tell you, it won't, be with, it won't be worthy to be compared with that which we shall be glorified when we shall see him. Truly the little foxes spoil the vine. That's true. But how much more can caring for the little things bring life and peace? If it's the little foxes that destroy and cause death to the vine, I believe if the church of God would be faithful over the little things, it'd bring life and peace. I don't, you know, I, I believe in for a great supernatural move of God, but I believe everyone I've ever read about came from a few things. About less than 20 students, you know, in a prayer meeting, at the Welsh or young people at, at a prayer meeting and the Welsh, Welsh revival springs forth. Yeah. I believe it's the Hebrides that started two elderly ladies praying, yeah. seeking God. They were just being faithful over a few things. I can tell you, how the Hebrides revival not broke out, you never know about those two ladies. Right. Had the Welsh revival had a move of God not sprung forth, you do not know about those about Evan Roberts. Yeah. But being faithful over a few things. That's something that's very practical. I can tell you we can put legs to that. If, I, if we can sit here and think about things that I've, I've not been as faithful with, I, I've neglected it because it's a little thing. I've despised it. I've thought little of it. You know, the scripture tells us in many places that you despise one, you love one. Christ said that you can't serve God and mammon, but you'll, you'll love one and despise the other. You know, I've always thought of that as hating, but it, it really means to love less or to think less of. I can tell you all you have to do to despise something or completely refuse something, just think little of it. Don't think of it as a, a, a something you must be faithful in. Just esteem it little. Just, just a Sunday night service. It's just a Sunday night service. We're gathered together. As a matter of fact, it's not just a Sunday night service. The youth's leading it. So it's even, we'll just make it a, even a littler thing. You understand what I'm saying? Just a faithful over a few things. It's just a Wednesday night service. And as a matter of fact, it's just faith and fellowship. So I'm just going to, just a little thing. Just a little thing. I believe if this church, and I believe many of y'all are faithful over the little things, a few things. I can tell you the thing about a little thing is it can get by you. You can be faithful over some little things and let another little thing slip by you. Not be, not be so attentive. You tell me Sunday morning service, yeah, we're not going to miss that. That's We're faithful in that. We're faithful in a big thing. That's a big deal. We're going to make that. But faithful over a few things. Yeah. Yeah. Scripture tells us he'll make us ruler over much. Yeah. That's not my motive at all. I don't believe that was the that was the servant's motive. I believe they were just trying to make their master a prophet. If you would, 
stand around the building. We're coming to an offering. But Sister Cindy, would you come? Search yourself. God, we thank you. We pray, God, that you would allow this word to, to be become us, Lord God, and that we would become this word, Lord God, that we'd be faithful over every part of our life, every situation, Lord, that we would not esteem anything as not worthy of our time, Lord God, that we would not um, acknowledge things for as eternal as they really are, Lord. We thank you, God. Blessed be your name. If you're here and you, you, you would think, you'd confess, you would even come and be bold enough to search yourself. And see if there's a little thing, a few thing, a small thing. Or maybe there's something that you've been being faithful in. You've been being faithful in that. It seems like there's no relief, but you've been faithful in that thing. And you're just wondering, how long's a while? I don't know how long a while is. But if you need strength to continue in that faithfulness over that few thing or that little thing, many will esteem it as a little thing. I can tell you, I've talked to people about burdens and situations in my life and they look at you like you're cross-eyed. I mean, they think, what in the world are you talking about? That's no big deal. I can tell you, if, if be faithful over that little thing, those few things. If you would, come gather around these altars, seek the Lord, be faithful.
preparation for that message. And, uh, I believe it was actually yesterday, dropped back from Branson and riding back from driving, riding the shotgun. But uh, uh, my brother, good brother Thomas, and I don't think he'd mind me saying this. I'd, uh, I hope he don't mind. He's stronger and bigger than I am. No, he, uh, you know, every morning, every Sunday morning, you'll, when you, when, when folks get here, Brother Thomas is over there, got milk poured, orange juice poured, donuts set out. I can tell you that a lot of people would have seen that as a little thing. I'm not making a lot of it. I'm saying a lot of people. But I, I also tell you, just recently, a door opened up for Brother Thomas to go to that jail and minister to people. I can tell you, I do believe, you know, I do believe you're faithful over little things, few things. I, I can tell you, if you haven't noticed in this preacher's preaching, I ain't preached a lot of preaching, if you haven't noticed that. So I'll let you know, I'm, I'll let you in on that secret. When pastor asked us to come, I can tell you, there was nobody any, shock, any more shocked than I was, but, you know, God began to deal with me about little things, just, I mean, I can still tell you, there's lots of little things I neglect. Now, after preparing for this message, I walk by a piece of trash, and I think, <laughs> you know, I'm not faithful to pick that up. I'm not, I'm not fit to preach to those students, I can tell you. I'm not faithful over anything, but I can tell you, there's, there's so many little things. If it's a little fox that's full of the vine, I can tell you, it's a little thing that will bring life to these. I do believe that. You know, I, I, I remember during the WOW conference, I got to sit back there and um, use those cameras. And that's something I'd never, I never thought I would have been interested in. But Brother Chris will testify to you. I felt really involved as part of the ministry, part of this service during that. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. Brother Chris will testify. It's, it's ministry. I can tell you, I, I've seen a lot of people make things not ministry. I can tell you, you can do that. I've seen, I've seen a lot of people step back and sound loose, chill out, whatever. But you look back there, you see, you see that group back there worshiping God. I can tell you, it's ministry. When you're, when you're doing things as unto the Lord, it's ministry. So, just if it seems like a little thing, I can tell you, as Pastor preached this morning, what we need for workers, building this kingdom of God. I can tell you, there's a lot of times, you know, well, I, I was going to say Brother Bill came and helped me, but I, actually I, I helped him. He came and I helped him. But I can tell you, he testified, I've done little things. I mean, like hand him a screw. I've done a little of little things. But I was part of the building. I can tell you, me and Brother Bill are co-laborers because of that. I just associated with him. I can tell you, if, if you'll throw in, it may be a little thing, but I can tell you, you're part of this great kingdom. God. I can tell you when, when God looks down from heaven he says what is that little thing and Christ says oh he, he's not much but when he's assembled together there at PAG he's part of that body of believers he's not just a little thing I believe we ought to be faithful over a few things but I know we've done preach this twice now but we're going to uh, go remember faith and fellowship Wednesday night Sister Donna reminded me of something that they're going to be recognizing the seniors next Sunday service to three, I believe, and then she told me the name of the thing, but I can't say it. Thank you. That's it. They're going to be doing that. So, uh, that's between services, so you can't be a part of that, but um, just be back Wednesday night for Faith and Fellowship. I'm looking forward to that. If you would stand around the building, we'll dismiss with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, God, for this night, this, this opportunity to conform more to your image, Lord, to your plan for our lives. Lord, we pray, God, that you would take us, Lord God, lead us all this week through our little things that we esteem not, Lord God. Make them, Lord God. Make us, rather, faithful in those things. Lord, we pray, God, that you would, Lord, lead God direct, bring us all back safely Wednesday night. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And if you're uh, not, I would encourage you, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, be here Tuesday night for the School of Christ. That's the teaching, Holy Spirit. Amen.